mud, they don't just get wet. They get dirty too, because there's a lot of muck in flood water. Not only should you remove the floor and wall coverings, but the exterior sheathing needs to go too. With the brick exposed, turn your attention to cleaning up the drainage path for future water events. There are usually large blobs of mortar that not only bridge the gap behind the brick, but can also fall down and block the escape route for water. Chisel excess mortar away from the framing and suck it out of the cavity with a shop vac. Now that there's a clear path for the water to drain down, give it a place to drain out. Cut out the mortar joints between every third brick along the bottom course and insert a weep screed that will keep insects out while letting water escape. With the base of the wall able to expel water and the cavity behind it clear, we're ready to look at flashing the bottom of the wall. One way to retrofit base flashing into an existing brick wall is with pieces of coil stock bent to deflect water away and cut to fit between the studs. As long as the drainage layers behind the brick are overlapped correctly, any water getting in will drain down and out. One way to provide a continuous drainage plane is with pieces of rigid foam cut about a half inch smaller than the cavity and pushed against the bumps of mortar. This forms a drainage channel, allowing water to run down and out. Follow it up with a closed cell two pound density polyurethane foam to add water resistance and structural integrity to the wall. One last step before closing it up is to paint the framing with acrylic latex paint. Then you can cover with non-paper-faced drywall. With any luck, your next flood repair will be much less invasive.